So I'm going to talk a little bit about the newest chemistry, the R1041 and KIT14. We have been doing this in early access for the last week, and literally for the last week. So these results are literally hot off the press. The servers finished running some of them last night. I made the talk at 5 AM this morning. So I'm a little bit jet lagged, sleep deprived, but hopefully the results will make some sense. Just <clears throat> a very quick overview before we get into the newest chemistry of where things are, because it kind of has improved a fair bit in the last six months. Ultra-long sequencing has been a new term for the last many, many years. There's a long Twitter thread about what defines ultra-long, and you can talk to us, you can talk to me, you can talk to Josh Quick, Matt Lewis, Nick Lohman, Clive had his tweet this afternoon. There's a whole range of numbers, but we call ultra-long as 100 KB plus in read length. And last year was the first time in the development cycle where with Promethean, ultra-long sequencing became a routine where you can get high throughput, large-scale data sets on the Promethean sequencing with ultra-long. And this is actually high throughput at the same time, uh, long read lengths with improvements from Long Read Club, University of Nottingham, uh, ourselves included, and a uh, couple of commercial companies, including Oxford Nanopore. In addition to this, one of the things that's been happening with uh, Nanopore for many, many years is this trajectory of read accuracy that keeps improving, which is fantastic, uh, except if you're a person who's doing rebase calling, because your GPUs are definitely earning their keep and making sure your infrastructure is well paid for. Just a very quick example on that with two chemistries, uh, two base calling versions. Guppy 5 that was released last year took base calling accuracy from 93 to 96%, which is fantastic. And just to give you an idea, the nanopore-based first human genome that was done in 2016, fall, uh, with sequencing, had an accuracy of 84%. That same data set with rebase calling now is at 96%. So this is the headroom that the R94 chemistry had with software updates over time. And then comes the question of what does this accuracy with the read length combined do? do? So here's an example <clears throat> of how long reads with high accuracy improved de novo genome assemblies. This graph has three lines. The one in green is CHM13 data set from the Telomere to Telomere Consortium that was released many years ago. The base color that it used in this particular green line assembly was a base color that was two years old. So the accuracy here in that data set was 89%. Now the upper lines, the blue and the purple, one of them is the actual T2T reference genome released. And the other one is nanopore data assembled using Shasta with Guppy 5 data. The take home there is that you have those two assemblies looking very similar to each other. The reason being the contiguity with the ultra long combined with the higher accuracy starts becoming a really high, uh, high profile and high quality assembly. And as a result of this, these ultra long data sets with the high accuracy make a very good experimental data set for the community to use, both for de novo assembly, variant calling type analyses, as well as methylation and other analyses. So as a result, something that we are doing today is in, in conjunction with the University of Nottingham and the Long Read Club and UC Santa Cruz, we are announcing three very deep ultra-long read data sets for the genome in a bottle samples, HG001, 002, and 005. We'll make all of these sequence and signal data available via AWS public data sets and uh, stay tuned for the, next, uh, for the actual links over the next few days. So very quickly now, jumping into why uh, I'm here, to talk about the results from our early access KIT14 and R1041 data sets. So there's, as you know, multiple versions of KIT14. So I'll show you a little bit. We ran some of these samples using shear DNA. This is the high speed run with high throughput that we ran. And uh, what we did was the standard ligation chemistry with two loads per flow cell, which means load the library, two days later, come back into a nucleus flush, load a second library, and on average, across a host of flow cells, we were getting over 140 gigabases, which is quite nice. One really important point to highlight is that the new kit is sensitive enough that you need less input material, and you actually load less library on the flow cell. Typically, if you are starting with a microgram of DNA per uh, library, that is the recommendation, on this kind of a kit, you can probably go with half as much and still be able to get a lot of sequence with actually no compromise to the throughput. <clears throat> In addition to this, this all works, how is the accuracy? So we've done a partial snapshot of our data and done the alignments against uh, AGs, uh, for AG002, which is a sample we sequenced, aligned against the AG38 reference, and what we see in our hands is a median identity of 98%, relative to 96% of the R94. This is a pretty significant improvement, and how does this translate to some variant calling applications I'll show you in the next couple of uh, slides. 
In addition to this high speed, 400 basis per second uh, sequence, we also did the low speed sequencing chemistry, which operates at 260 basis per second. Impressively enough, with the same framework, two library loads per flow cell, and the same lower input of loading per flow cell, we are able to get 120 plus gigabases on, the, on a single flow cell. This was amazing. I can tell you with both of these runs, we've had instances where we thought the flow cell is about to die now, and now, and now, but it would not. I almost nicknamed these flow cells the flow cells that do not die, because they keep going for four days and still sequencing as if they were brand new. It's very amazing to see a flow cell on day three and after a nucleus flush coming back with 5,000 nanopores on the Promethean. Now with the low speed runs, as expected, we got a little bit higher accuracy at 99% almost with the median. What's also nice is that what you'll notice with that orange curve is that it's not only sharper, but that fat, uh, left tail is kind of much lower than the, uh, much better than the other one. This is the, the tail of lower accuracy that we want to get rid of. And over time, I'm sure there is a path to do so for Oxford Nanopore. Now, when we look at these R10.4 data, one of the things that helps because of the two sensors is that you expect the homopolymer resolution to be much better. And lo and behold, that seems to be the case. There's three plots here. One of them is for the Guppy 3.6, which was a release that was two years ago. Guppy 5, which is from last year, these are both R9.4. And then on the far right is R10.4.1. The take home here is that with the newest pore, we are able to get really good homopolymer resolution going up to 20 bases, which is nice. You'll see that it, the diffusion uh, is much lower at the below 20 long homopolymers. What's nice is that in conventional human genomes, there's not a lot of long homopolymers once you get past 20. So we're starting to see a pretty good correlation between what's expected and observed. And this bodes well for sequencing uh, both with genome assembly as well as variant calling inferences. Now, in the, early evidence, in the early experiments that we've done so far, we've also looked at variant calling. And <clears throat> to do that, we looked at our framework, which is called Pepper Margin Deep Variant, developed in collaboration with Google Health. And we ran both of these uh, data sets through our Pepper Margin Deep Variant pipeline. There's a lot of numbers here to go off. The key numbers to just focus on, uh, if we were to spend a few seconds, is the F1 score, the last column. And when you look at the green, which is the high speed runs, we are seeing an F1 score of Indels at 0.86 and uh, SNV calls, calls of 0.99. And then for the low speed ones, we are seeing Indels at 0.88 and SNVs of 0.99. This is using untrained Pepper models. We haven't even trained the framework for R10.4 data, and we are already matching, if not surpassing, the R9.4 best case data that we've seen in, in field in our performance so far. To give you a perspective, these numbers are about the same, if not better, especially on the indels, to what we used in the study with Stanford in collaboration with uh, you and Ashley's group, that you, the talk that you heard this morning. So even before anything has happened, these numbers are very promising, and we are quite excited, because with the right training, we think there's a way to improve indel calling to, to mid 0.9s, and SNV calling to 0.999, and further improvements on that. So that's really impressive. Uh, we are very pleased with this. There's certainly ways to make it better, which we are working on. Now, what about assemblies? If we look at de novo assemblies, we are experimenting on these data both with Shasta and Fly uh, in collaboration with Chan Zuckerberg and NCI, uh, Paolo Carnevali and Misha Komogorov. And in the early, early experiments, this is an assembly that literally just finished uh, about six hours ago, we see that we are starting to see over uh, 20 megabase length quantic NG50s, which is nice. And this obviously needs more evaluation and more assessment, so we'll be doing this over the next some time. But these are using shared DNA. So the best de novo assemblies from Nanopore come with ultralong. So what's the plan for ultralong with high accuracy? And of course, that is an interest. And along with uh, Nottingham, we are evaluating ultralong uh, chemistry with Kit 14 with the higher speed. And so far, it's promising. We have an experiment that's actually running right now on the Promethean in Santa Cruz. And with three flow cells, we are averaging on the order of 30 to 35 gigabases per flow cell. The read n 50s are nice in the range of 70 to 90 kb. And it's working. Uh, it certainly is not as high as R94 tends to be at this point in time. But I think there is obviously a path to improvement, as is the case with uh, any technology like this. And I'm almost certain that, I'm, because I'm the last talk before Oxford Nanopore's uh, evening talk, all of this could very well get outdated in the next hour. And so just to quickly summarize, we've been quite uh, 
pleasantly surprised and happy with how the kit has performed. There's obviously kinks that you have to iron through with training models, minor data issues that show up, etc. The accuracy seemed to be on point with what we might have expected. It's a little bit below what we had seen in uh, talks from Oxford Nanopore, but in-field performance can be a little bit different. We are evaluating duplex data in-house as well, and I think there is a way that ultra-long sequencing is already good for a lot of purposes and needs evaluation and with a roadmap to improve. And as is always the case, there's a lot of people involved in any kind of any of this kind of work. So I am grateful to be representing them. There's a lot of people to thank, including colleagues at Oxford Nanopore. And with that, I'll stop and take any questions. <laughs>